multiples, that means that you can go any way. You can go multiple ways if there are multiple definitions. There's a general understanding. But, and, I, and I think that's what we need, Janessa. I think we need the general understanding of this definition. Find some more. Because what's going to happen is people are going to pick and choose whatever way they want to go, Pastor. Okay. Uh, come up to the, uh, come up to the mic. Okay. In the parentheses it says a position of power of importance illegally or by force. So, so when it comes down to it, it's a woman that is taking over something. Right, right. And, 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 and even when you deal with that forcefully, sometimes it's even to the point of when God has not given it to them. Right. And that's the area that the Bible deals with. Uh, uh, for instance, if God haven't put you in this place, if God haven't done this, God haven't set you here, then therefore, don't you take that because you're taking it forcefully. You, you understand what I'm saying? And, and that's, uh, 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 if you dig deep, and I, I'm, I'm talking a whole lot though. When you dig deep in, in stuff like that, it, there is a depth to some things. Just like it said, and whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So many people will turn around and say, I believe in God, but they're doing this and doing that. But that word believeth means to give yourself over to that which you believe in. Anything with ETH on the end is an ongoing thing. Yes. Go ahead, Sister Janessa. I have a question, Pastor, because I don't get it. On um, verse 12, so it says, we're saying that the woman's not supposed to usurp authority, right? So then in the same context is a woman also not supposed to teach? Because if you if you break the scripture down, like you take the sentence that says, but I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority. So then that would mean, if you take out the first part, if you take out the teach and just say, I suffer not a woman to usurp authority, because the nor means that they're one and the same. So does, does that make sense? Come on, attorney. Oh, wow. Come on, attorney. Oh, wow. right there. Yeah. Nor, the word nor is a... I don't want to be all technical. Okay, so nor... Don't start getting all hit and shy and stuff. Come on, let it out. We know we smart. Okay, so nor is a... I don't want to be all technical. Okay, so nor is a conjunction. So that means that they're the two, it joins the two clauses together. Mm -hmm. So it says, but I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority. So that means she's not supposed to do either. Right. So then in that sense, then everybody's wrong because she's not supposed to teach, mm -hmm. nor to usurp authority. So is that to say that the woman is also not supposed to teach? Because we kind of just glanced over that. She's, she's already told you the way she's supposed to teach. So he didn't need to tell you that again here. But here it says that she's well, not to supposed to teach. The way he here. told her to teach. Okay. And then I had another question. Teaching versus preaching, when we gave the definitions, mm -hmm. it seemed like if I was a man, which I'm not, clearly, I would rather have a woman preach than but, teach. But you, you want to hold that just for a minute? Okay. Because when it's a teach or you serve authority mm -hmm. over the man. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and and when we back up, I think we kind of dealt with that. You know, there comes to a point to where God is ahead of Christ. Mm -hmm. Christ ahead of church. Uh, uh, Christ ahead of man. Man ahead of the woman. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, the woman switching the role and, and playing that role, it, 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 it goes to that point. Not saying that uh, they can't teach you anything. You, you go into McDonald's and uh, 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 you don't know how to flip burgers. I don't know how to flip them burgers, but the woman manager might be the one that teach me how to do that. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? It, 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 it has been uh, to the point to where I didn't know what to do and how to pray. And when I didn't know how to pray, it was a woman that told me, you know, you got to go to God with all you have. So, so when it comes to taking that authority, you know, and, and joining them together, I believe is what you said. Right. Uh, uh, I believe that that's where that is. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, if you can go to the next. One. The, the and then, uh, then we're gonna get to Mom Erwin uh, uh, after you get to. Okay. This. So this, I, I got about you. Okay, sweet. All right. I don't really have an opinion on what I'm about to ask, but I just want to know, like, where you guys stand on it, because. It seems like preaching, 
would be, for lack of a better word, less effective than teaching because as a woman teaching, she's able to mold the minds because you're allowing her to go in and give examples Girl, you and give stop. all these things. And as a teacher, she would be the one that's telling the man what to do. Whereas exactly. preaching is nothing but a proclamation to say that this is what the word says and we all know that. Because as a, in a sermon and preaching, you don't have time to go in and break everything down and give an interpretation wow. and mold and do <laughs> all these things. Already. So I would rather, if I was a man that was against women having more authority in the church, I would say I want her to preach and not teach. Because as a teacher, right, she's able to mold the minds. As a preacher, she's only given us what has already been said in the word. <laughs> you know, already talked about it. Smarty pants. <laughs> I don't want to. And, and, and come up here and open that up. I guess I'm going to go there first. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, but it, it comes to the point to where you'll find in the Bible where it tells a woman not to teach. But tell me where in the Bible does it tell a woman not to preach? Pastor, wow. That sums up the whole thing. No, no. I've searched it all week long. I, I looked all week long. And, and, and in my looking, I found teach. But I never did find preach. And, and the way that that girl just broke, broke that down, I mean, she broke it down better than I could ever think about saying. I, I, I mean, you know, was I think was I thinking on them lines? Kinda. Yes, <laughs> Besides. Okay. All right. Mom, Irma. Anybody knew Bishop Carter? Bishop Carter did not believe in anyone preaching. No, he didn't. But when I had my first sermon, Bishop Carter was there and sang, he made Pastor Carter come and sang me a song. And he, and he dedicated my first sermon. Now, how I got in this thing was I was evangelized. Opened up on 6th Avenue. Matter of fact, when I opened up, Mo asked me, Mama, what are you doing? I didn't have a clue. I just knew God told me to do something, and I did what the Lord said. Didn't know what it was, had not been taught. I was scared, didn't call myself a pastor for a long time. The pastor came up because I had people that began to follow me, unsaved folks. See, I'm not after, I won't fish in nobody else's pond. They don't have to argue with your doctor. If I, don't, if I ain't around telling you to dig up in your pond, I don't have to argue with your doctor. I'm going to get folks an unsaved folk. Unsafe because unsafe folks don't care if you're male, women, female, horse, cat. They just want Jesus. <laughs> That's all they want. They don't care nothing about what we believe, what we don't believe. Is he taught us what they don't. All they want is Jesus. So that's it. That's all they want. So when I begin to have, begin to minister and begin to feed folks and begin to do what I did, people started following me. And because I didn't know what I was doing, I began to try to take them to somebody else's church. Because if you're just an evangelist, you ain't a pastor, so what you got with members? So I take them over here a while, and they wouldn't stay. And I take them over there a while, and finally, Sister Doll Baby, those y'all know Doll Baby, yes, said to me, I, I, got, I, I got her off the street. She said to me, if you don't stop doing this, we're going back to the street. Wow. We're not following anybody else. God gave us you. So I don't know how you're going to work it out with your insecurities, but you better do something or I'm going back to the street. Mm -hmm. Well, I sure couldn't have that. And I had about about ten folks at that time that was following me beside my own children. 
And so I began, we opened up the church and I would make them drag the stuff out on the on the parking lot where the bees was and we had a church. <laughs> and we just kept on, kept on, kept on. And the Lord said to me, I called you to this. Are you going to disrespect me? Uh -oh. Wow. The Holy Ghost told me in prayer. He said, I told you to do this, girl. Are you going to disrespect me? Jesus. And I said, oh, God. Because I didn't, I had been taught, you know, I'm a koji baby. I've been taught, you know, don't do this, don't do that. And so I, when I got up and told the saints what the Lord had told me, I was doing this, Denise. I was scared. Believe it or not, I was doing this. And when I said that, the folks got up and said, well, we joined in your church. And we were just waiting on you to make up your mind what you were doing. Because we want to be saved, but we ain't following nobody else. God didn't give us nobody else. And so I kept on doing what I was doing. I kept on, just kept on ministering, kept on loving people, kept on doing what the Lord told me to do. And when they, when they say, don't preach and don't whatever, whatever I do is what I do. I don't hoop. I'm not a hooper. So if you call preaching hooping, then I guess I ain't preaching. I don't hoop. Because I want you, when I get through, I want you to know exactly what I said. I don't need to sing it to you. I need you to know that what I said. I don't need to sing you no song. I want you to know holiness is right. Amen. So now, whatever folks call it, they can call it whatever they want to. I don't feel bad. When I came to Pastor Quinn's church, he said I taught. Praise the Lord. You call it preaching? Praise the Lord. I don't care what you call it. I'm not concerned about what folks think. I'm not concerned about who say what. I'm concerned about doing what the Lord told me to do. Amen. And I told the brother at one time, I said, listen, if you don't believe it, believe it for the work's sake. Watch. And there are millions of people, and I can say millions in this city have been blessed through that ministry. Mm -hmm. Millions. There have been. I got almost, an, um, almost, not in every church, but almost every church, I got somebody that used to belong to learn another Lord. Mm -hmm. I can go anywhere and see my babies. Anywhere. Sometimes y'all don't know they're my babies. And I don't say that. I, you know, you have, have to run your mouth all the time. You better run your mouth all the time. Fool. Yeah, I didn't tell all these business things. Amen. But sometimes I'm looking at my baby. Folks just shouting and going on because I'm glad to see them going on in the Lord. Amen. Almost every, almost, I said almost, every church that I fellowship with in this city has somebody that got saved under my ministry. Mm -hmm. wow. They used to come and they would hide in the back. And wouldn't come because they didn't want nobody to see their cars. Because folks would say, oh, you down there with that crazy woman. I never fell out with nobody. I went to every meeting. I was very respectful. Yes, and I think this is what I tell the sisters now. And listen, I was the first one. Wasn't a woman in nobody's pulpit. Nobody. No Baptist. No, well, no, the Methodist Church had a couple. I take that back. Methodist Church had a couple. But most of the time, wasn't none. Now if you don't have one, you, you, know, you ain't involved now unless you got just one. But at that time, wasn't none. And I tell all the sisters. You don't have to try to be no man. That's right. That's right. You ain't got to be standing up on no pew. That's Keep right. your feet on the floor. That's right. Get you a handkerchief with some lace on it. And do what God told you to do. Man. Somebody, if you don't try to look up your skirt, if you start doing that. But, but, but you what? But you what? No. Sometimes, but you what? I've been some places where they get the, they get the collar and hooping and climbing on the pew. Amen. Just like you And I'm, I'm, while I'm in your midst, you climb on the pew, I'll come take you down. Come on down for me. <laughs> now, I remember a few mothers, one being my great grandmother, missionary Jessie Booth. Uh, she was one that was with Bishop Mason then. She would go back and forth with Bishop Mason. That was my great grandmother. And I remember. I, I go to churches right now that honor her. Mm -hmm. They put her up because it is two churches in Mississippi that she prayed out. Mm -hmm. And this is what uh, they used to do, women used to do. But she went and she prayed out this church, found a building, mm -hmm. said there is a need for Jesus right here. Yes. This is what, the way my grandmother talked about it right here. Said that there's a need for Jesus right here. And so she saying that there's a need for Jesus. So she get people together. And when she got people together, she began to minister to them, tell them all about Jesus, and they get saved. And, and oh my, this is a deep one. Now, now look, they got saved. And if they got saved, let me say, the Bible say, how can they 
hear without a sound. And how can they preach except they be sent? So she got they got saved. They would not have been able to hear if she wasn't proclaiming the good news. So I, I say she prayed it out. She got people saved. Said she had about 40 people in one church. And then she said, Lord, send us a pastor. And she began to go forth as God, I need a pastor over here. Next thing you know, preacher came from the whole other side of Mississippi. And he's a superintendent now. And the superintendent, he got 40 something churches up under him. Because Mississippi is a lot bigger than what we are here. The state don't even have that. But they prayed out the church. Then brought them in. Because they were stuck on the fact that God the head of Christ, Christ the head of man, man the head of the woman. Now, when it came to it, that preacher allowed her to preach. Allowed her to go for it. I'm talking about she ran revivals. The last revival she ran, she was on her deathbed. 97 years old. With one leg. Got all kind of people saved. Glory to God. They talk about the fact that they weren't paying tithes until she looked it up in the Bible and said, the Bible tells us to go to get. So, what is the difference between them and us? And you know, this is a question. I'm not going one, one way or the other. What's the difference between them and us? They prayed out of church. Come on, quiet down. And now, you know, we have women that are pastoring. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not saying anything one way or another right now. I'm going to close at the end. Mm -hmm. But what was, what's the difference now? And, and that, that was a question in the beginning. Women preaching? Women teaching? Women evangelizing? And then women pastoring. You understand what I'm saying? So when we come down to it, I have been at a point. Now, I don't know, you know, everybody's business. I don't know this and that. But I went to somewhere the other day. And I went, the Holy Ghost spoke to me. It was a preacher. And I told Sister Shondell or Sister Nisi, one of them, that God gave me a word for this girl. And Lord help me, this is a tough one. And she was a co-pastor. And in that, the Lord told me that I got a word for her. Oh my God. So that leads into the next thing that we, we had. You know, I spoke of it in the beginning. Y'all better believe it. I'm not throwing off on nothing. Nowhere, no way. But this is a discussion. Yeah. Co-pastors. Mm. Co-pastoring. You know, and, and we'll, we'll get into that. Because one thing that just hit my spirit, you know, uh, uh, Minister Denise it is really looking for some answers. Yes, she is. And, and in that being said, we're looking to get there. Because sometimes we're looking for answers and sometimes things are going here, going there, we're listen, hearing this, hearing that, and all of it's real good. But I'm looking and reaching for a certain thing. Hallelujah. I got a scripture I'd like to give you if you allow me to do something. Okay, yes ma'am. Elder Mo, Elder Dame, uh, Elder Mo? Yes sir. This, this go now, we're talking about what God has done, right? Yes sir. Not what man thinks, what God did. Oh, what he did sanction and what he did not sanction. <clears throat> Give me Judges. We're going to Judges 4 and 4. Judges 4 and 4. Mm -hmm. And Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Apollos. Now wait. Deborah was a prophetess. Mm -hmm. She was also a judge. Yep. She was a married woman. Mm -hmm. 
Well, no judges. They, they didn't judge the women. The woman did not just judge women. That's right. That's right. Come on. Say that. You and you weren't no judge in Israel, and you got to divide up between. Well, I'm the. Well, no. What she wasn't a judge. What's her husband? Her and her husband wasn't judges. She was a judge. Come on. And she was married. She was a married woman. Very wise woman. Read up. She judged Israel at that time. Uh -huh. and Israel at large. Uh -huh. Not the women of Israel. 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 There you go. Israel had men in it. Uh -huh. But y'all just get just so y'all didn't know since I'm, since I'm teaching Janessa. Israel comprised of women and men. Let's go we get a clear understanding. That what Deborah did. Read. And she dealt. And she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah, uh -huh. between Ramah and Bethel, uh -huh. and Mount Ephraim. Uh -huh. And the children of Israel came up to her judgment. Came up to her for judgment. Only the women of Israel came just to get judged. Israel. 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 Because, you know, she was a woman, and therefore she couldn't use her authority, so the brothers didn't come. Then he went this Israel. You see, when, you, when you're talking about you, that use of authority, that's a Jezebel spirit. <laughs> Wow. You taking over something. I come here and I'm going to get Pastor Cameron. So I come and join his church and try to run it. Right. I don't care who I am. Once I come and join this church, I am under Pastor Cameron. Yes, ma'am. Right. Right. If you notice when I said I hadn't had anything to say, and he said, wait, mother, did I say, I've got to keep on talking. No, he said, wait, did I, I stop. Because when you're in this house, Yes, ma'am. Right. You know, so but the Jezebel spirit said, I don't care what you say, boy. You asked me to come over here, and I didn't know nothing about it. And now you got me here. That's what the Jezebel spirit is. Wow. Right. Right. That's what use of an authority is. Thank you, God. And because, and I'm going to tell you something, because that young man loves me, he would have said, well, mother, if you feel that way, go ahead. But it was still, it was still been wrong. Because he's the pastor. You teach it. Yep. Wow. But if thou would not go with me, then I would not go. Read now. Mm -hmm. 
And she said, I will surely go with thee, notwithstanding the journey that thou takest shall not be for thy honor. For the Lord shall sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. Mm -hmm. Come on. The rest of the book says. In the hand of a woman. That's what the book says. Yep. Now read that last part. You ask me to come. I'm a mother. Oh, yeah. Read that last part again out loud, brother. And she said, I will surely go with thee, notwithstanding the journey that thou takest, shall not be for, for thy honor. For the Lord shall sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. And Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. Come on. Wow. Lord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Amen. That's the word. Glory to God. Now. I think Sister Denise may have had something to say. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> what do I start? Huh? I just am glad for the word of God. Amen. Um, Amen. And for this time, for Pastor Cameron to allow us That's right. to even talk about this. All right. Um, I have much respect for Church of God in Christ, for God's word. I am a Baptist. Preacher. Yes. Amen. Every Saturday morning, my pastor, Bobby L. Young, sits in his office with me and three, four, five other young ministers. And he teaches us about God and his Holy Spirit and the work. And he tells us to follow God. And I've been afraid to step out. I've read about Deborah. I've read, you know, it's easy to go to the Word. And these people had, they had the, they had the Lord on their side. And what my pastor is telling me, that God is on my side. He didn't, he tells me, do not step into anybody's pulpit. You never. That's right. Go in, I'm a preacher. Nope. You go in and you serve. You sit, you humble. If you are asked to do something, you do it. If you're not asked to do anything, you sit there. If they tell you to teach the roaches on the floor, you that's come what on. you do. Come on. I don't have to go in and do I'm anything. Teach them what's <laughs> but my question is, God yesterday, today, and forevermore. We're, I've, I've, I've been in Genesis for almost a year now. We're only up to verse 21. And it, it's so important for us to stay in the Word. And for a man of stature, as my pastor, sits down every Saturday morning with somebody like me and tell me to go for it, as God gives me utterance, all I want to do is learn, Pastor Cameron. And when I asked you to, to I want to know what, what people are thinking and what the Word of God says about this, mm -hmm. this thing. Because our girls are coming up in a society that don't have no respect for a, an elder like Elder Quinn. We got some people that will walk over what he has to say. But I don't walk over what Elder Quinn has to say. Because I respect what he has to say. Because he come from a time when they wouldn't even let a black woman say, ouch, in public. Wow. He comes from a time, he's been here in this world, when they black men couldn't even drink water out of the fountain. Well, a white man. Well. Okay? Just <laughs> your hands. Yes. You couldn't even do that. So if he tell me, baby, you sit over there. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to sit over there. I'm going to sit over there. But I believe that Pastor Quinn said, you say such and such. He, the Holy Spirit works through his prophets, his pastors. It comes down from above. I have no right to, to buck this one. If God told her to get in a box and preach the word to sinners, that's what you do. Amen. But if he tells you, when we, we look at authority, I, I, I said, I've been sitting for a whole year, I ain't preached nothing. Mm. 
Does that stop me from loving God and no. serving people no. and serving my pastor? No. He come in, if he tell me to pray, I pray. Amen. If he don't tell me to pray, not to pray, I sit. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's right. This work is not about us. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's right. And I just want to, I want the girls and the young women to know better. Amen. To be in obedience. That's to right. be in obedience is better than sacrifice. That's right. Man. Mm. That's right. And I, I, Pastor Cameron, I guess the Elder Kenneth just saw on my face <laughs> that I'm just, I'm overjoyed just to even have the chance to sit up here with an Elder Quinn and a mother shepherdess home and yourself. Because I'm just learning. And, and all of this conversation is good. Don't get it out. Don't go out and say, boy, they come in with that old stuff. Don't do that. Because you don't know what brought that thing. Now you're right. teaching something, right? That's right. Come on. And I, I respect That's right. every, you respect everyone That's right. for what they have from the Lord. That's right. I'm not saying I'm going to hell because I said I'm a preacher. God, I don't believe God is going to, to send me the other way. No. But I do believe that I have to learn respect. Yes. Amen. I do believe that the world is looking for us to be confused Amen. and to, to spout off things we don't know nothing about. Right. To be fighting amongst one another. And Pastor Kevin, I think this is a bold move to have a, a Baptist girl sitting up here <laughs> in the church of God in Christ. That was bold. That was a, that's a bold move. That's a bold move. You know, I think that you are a, a, a what is it, a visionary, trailblazer looking down the road. These young kids that are in here today are going to be the church that take us to the next level. And the morning night, the Church of God in Christ, the morning streets, Baptist, whatever you may be. But I, I, I'm just full. I'm, I'm just full. Everything I know comes from the word. Yes. And I've read and, and my pastor's taught me about 1 Timothy. He's taught me about 2 and 12. Mm -hmm. He taught me about what the, that time frame what was going on. Mm -hmm. Who was there and what them silly women were doing. Mm -hmm. What they were talking about. Paul had to sit them down. Amen. There was confusion. You can't have confusion in God's house. That's right. That's right. You better speak. So, you know, I am not here to get my point across. I'm here to learn. Amen. I'm here to understand why Pastor Quinn said, "Baby, you just said you do this," because he knows what God has brought them through. You you let too many of these girls go, you are gonna have some stuff in the church. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're not. I'm leaving with them. Okay, you let too many of us. Starting another church. Start, you know what I'm saying? We can be silly sometimes. That's so right. True. That's we right. right. You speak can, and I read. You know That's right. She's true. speaking some wisdom, y'all. Amen. Yes, she is. And I've she been there. Yes, she is. And, and, and one part of wisdom that she is speaking, she said, "I didn't come here to get my point across." Oh, no. But rather I came here to learn something. Yes, Amen. Yes, and do you know that that is wisdom? Yes, because the Bible lets us know that we got to be quick to hear. Yes, quick. Slow to speak. Yes, slow to wrath, slow to anger. Yes, and when it comes down to it, if you look at us these days, look at these arguments that we have. Just touch yourself and think about it. Just one minute. Think about these. When you get to talking, what you're waiting for is for the other one to shut up so you can get your point across. Hallelujah! But the thing that you're not doing is taking time to listen to what somebody else has to say. What did I tell us about maturity? Maturity, come on somebody, is when you have a problem and an issue with someone. It is, come on somebody, it is trying to understand the problem that they have with you rather than fighting them over that problem. Y'all ain't hearing me. Because when you learn to get some understanding, then you can go a lot further. Because knowledge is the key. And wisdom is applying that knowledge in your everyday life. Amen? 
So that's wisdom. Take time to listen to what's going on. Don't be so quick. Yeah. Sometimes we get antsy. Oh, you already know that wisdom she oh, used. Oh, she turned around and she said, uh, you know, I am a woman preacher. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. But I respect right. Pastor Quinn. Y'all don't hear me. And if he tells me to sit over here and do that, I'm going to sit right there. Y'all didn't give that wisdom. But some of us, when he get ready to speak and say this and that, ooh, wait a minute. No, 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 no. I got no. We wait for him to be no. quiet so we can get our point of view. Help us tonight. But do y'all understand that we got to see where somebody's coming from? Yes, sir. You understand? And that will equip us and help us to be more apt to help somebody. Yes. Are y'all hearing this? Yes. Glory to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus. It'll make it to where we're able to help somebody. That's right. That's because a fool yeah, is one that will sit down and not listen to what anybody else says. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Because if you know how somebody else thinks, you know how to deal with it. That's right. when, if we know how somebody else thinks, we don't know how to talk to them, won't we? Oh my God, are y'all catching this? Amen, amen. So, use some wisdom in everything you do. Amen? Amen. Amen. Touch it, Lord. Touch it. Touch it right now. Hallelujah. And I got Ashton too. Ashton been holding his hand up. And it shall come to pass in the last days, said the Lord, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Amen. So it's going to come forth, and, and, and that goes right back along with Sister Deborah, being a prophetess, and a judge, prophetess, one who brings forth the word of God, one that God has given instruction to, one that God has spoken to, Miriam as well, come on now, but see, y'all got to understand this, we dealt with Miriam a while back ago, didn't we, and Miriam, oh, we got some good from that, because Miriam was so awesome. Are y'all hearing that? She was a cold piece. Yeah. If it wasn't for Miriam, there would be no Moses. That's right. Come on. Miriam, uh, she, she took, and Moses was born, and she said, they get ready to kill everybody, let me push them over there. Mm. When they get ready to kill every baby, I'm going to throw them right into the hands of the enemy. Mm. Yes. Come on now, using wisdom that somebody will take care of it. Somebody grabbed the hole and took care of Moses. Yeah. And all the while, she's watching him grow up. Y'all yeah. don't hear me. Yeah. Hallelujah. And then it comes to the point to where, watching him grow up, watching him do this, she's been used by God. She done heard from God. She knows what God's saying. She's a prophetess. Oh, my God. But at the same time, no. Moses grew. Oh, yes. And when he grew, God had a word through Moses. Through Moses. God wanted to use Moses to deliver his people. But it come to the point to where she got nerve wrecked over it. Moses, the man of this strange woman, I don't like her. And then Moses thinks he's the only one that hears from God. But Miriam still was a cold piece. Sister said, Shondell, that she was so cold that she turned around, and when she got all the way over across that dry land, amen, she picked up her tambourine and had a thousand people going for it. Come on now. Woo! And they went in. Hallelujah. But when they began to dance and shout, she was a praise leader. Yes. She led them into praise. Yes. Uh -huh. She led them into worship. She wow. helped them in so many areas. Wow. And she was the reason that Moses was alive. That's exactly, right. Exactly, right. exactly right. But at the same time, God called Moses. That's right, sir. Yeah, Lord, Come Lord, Lord. And she said, I hear from God well. just like yeah. he did. Yeah. Yeah. And call an attitude. Uh -oh. So she got struck with yeah. leprosy. Yeah. 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 
and the same one that she tried to usurp authority over. Come on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's exactly what they want. She ended up, come on, somebody, I'm going to have him pay this leprosy off of me. So, this is the whole thing right here is look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, know your place. say there are no ordained women in the church of God in Christ. They have pastoral appointments. They do not have elder ordination. However, what do we, what, what, can I listen to Pastor Quinn, so what do we do with George Rogers who is a pastor? What do we do with Kim Burrell who is a pastor? Come on. Dr. Maria Gardner who is a pastor. Dr. Latia Howard who is a pastor. And these women are national. Dr. Latia Howard is a national Sunshine Day president. Pastor Rogers is an international youth, a youth chairman. I'm just saying, what do we Yeah, I had that written. Because remember, she came in. And I was getting ready to somewhat go there. Okay. But, but yet still, you have to understand, what do we do with them? 
Right. We don't do nothing with them. We, we respect them in exactly. the place that they're at. That's right. That's right. When that friend say what he said when you're in Rome, do as the Romans do. I mean, but these men are church of God and church of God. And you're right. But yet they are not recognized by the national That's church. Right. I agree. Yeah, I agree. And, 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 but they are recognized by the state, but not by the national church. Now, when, when the, where the national church is going, I'm not sure. Now, 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 but we're going just like all the rest. All the rest of them. And, 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 and when it comes to the point, my, my thought comes to this right here. If, if we go to the point to where a woman is able to be elevated to be a bishop, where do we stop? Wow. Well, in the full gospel church, there's and that's completely out of order. Yes, sir. Yeah. And that's that, that's, no, that's no. out of order. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you with all respect to the panel and to everyone that's in here. Even when you, even when you look at the Book of Timothy, when it talks about the bishop and the office of a bishop and it being the husband of one wife. Yep. Understanding that when the Bible spoke of the the, the office of a bishop, there it only speaks about the bishop being the chief elder. Yes. There's no difference between a bishop and an elder. So if that being so, how can a, how can a woman be an elder if she can only be the husband of one wife? It can't be. Again, let me state this. Uh, uh, what? Are we talking about women being used by God or women being called by God? Because even with Deborah, she was used by God. Now, look at this. Let's, let's look at it like this. There was prophets. The children of Israel didn't want uh, the prophet no more. They wanted a king. That's right. So now, we have a king. Did that get rid of the prophets or the prophetess? No, no. It's a ministry and gift. It's not a, uh, uh, it's not a calling of leadership. Oh, wow. It's not. No, we're in the Bible. Let's go to the New Testament. Okay, back up. What did you say? Say it again. I, I didn't hear it. I missed that message. When the king, when they had a king, they still had prophets. It's a ministry and gift. The Bible said, as he said, in the last day, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. The sons and daughters shall prophesy. Them are gifts. They're not they're, they're, they're gifts. Okay. So, in the New Testament, when God established the church, show me one place in the New Testament when God put the woman as the head. I understand the Old Testament. And God did use a woman. God used women throughout the whole life. He used a, he used a donkey. He had humans. Why didn't he use a donkey? He will use women. Women women are some of my best, some of my favorite preachers are women. I, I don't disagree with none of that. We're talking about the calling. Show me where a woman can be the husband of one wife according to the word of God in the New Testament. And show me in the New Testament where God used a woman to be the head. Can I answer, Pastor? Sure. Can I answer? Romans chapter 16. If you look at the word used for Phoebe, every, it is the same word used for the apostles. It is the same word used for elders. It is the same word. So what? So my question is, my question is, yeah, yeah, come to the mic. My check two or two. And, I'm and, sorry. And just start from the top. Start that that was good. Okay. And, and tell us what the word Pull out the Bible, please. I got you. Let's first of all go back to Deborah. That is why I told you all Deborah was a judge. Yes. She was not only a prophetess, she was a judge. Yes. And when there were kings, there were no more judges. Right. Because the judges ruled before the kings. Right. Deborah was a judge of Israel. She was also a prophetess. And, and, but, but, and listen, I'm going to let you go with that. But uh, during um, uh, uh, that, it, it's going to go a little deeper than that. And, and we, we're going to end up having to have another discussion on that because of the simple fact that you know, uh, uh, God was the ruler. Yes. And, and, and being that God was the ruler, he used them in their giftings. And, and it was not that they were rulers, but they were people that had the word of God. Now, and then it came to the point to where, at, at, at that point, because they had no one that was over them. Because they had no one that was ruling back then. They went forth asking God, can you give us somebody? Just like the other nations have. So therefore, uh, uh, the judges were not used like 
the kings and like this and like that. But what they were used for was for counsel. Right. And I simply, so therefore, Pastor, I simply okay. use the terminology that the Bible used. Yeah, yeah. When you read about Deborah's death, it says she ruled Israel 40 years. Right. So I simply use, I, I, I simply I use the terminology of the Bible. Yeah, yeah. And I understand what you're yeah. saying. When we get to the New Testament, when we're talking about Phoebe mm -hmm. in, in Romans chapter 16, Number one, if we understand historically, Phoebe brought the book of Romans. Without Phoebe, it would not have been the book of Romans. It was customary when a book was brought, it was read. That meant Phoebe had to stand in the synagogue and read the entire epistle. Come on. So the word used for her as servant, the, the Greek word is presbytery. It is the same word used for bishop, elder, and deacon. We call her a deaconess. The Bible called her a presbytery, and she was a woman. When you go down the line, or when you read the rest of Romans chapter 16, you will find some of those apostles named in there are women. Junia, Trifina, Trifosa. These are women, they are not men. But their prophets and prophet is a gift in No, no. Not the no, no. Right. Paul's, Paul, right. Paul, Paul didn't call them prophets. Paul said they are named as chief among the apostles and they were in Christ before me. That's Romans chapter 16. Read it down. That's what Paul said. You better take okay. That's all. Let, let's get chapter 16 and let's read. read. There you go. It's right here. Read okay. It, Start it, reading it. it. Read let's, it let's hear it. <laughs> Romans 16. Romans 16. You better read Romans right here now. Verse yeah. 1. I'm not going to try to hold y'all too long. We, we, just like the sex. Just like the sex one. We're we going to have to have a part two of this. Because we're getting somewhere. Come on, Roman. Read. Read. All right. So there's 27 verses. I don't know what y'all want me to read. But uh, <laughs> Romans 16, first verse says. Read Romans. Read Romans. No I, I command. I commend unto you, Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is at Centuria, that ye receive her in the Lord as becoming saints, and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she hath need of you. For she hath been a secure of many, and of myself also. Greet. Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in, G in Christ Jesus, who have for my life laid down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Salute my well-beloved, uh, all these horrible names, I just don't know. Um, who is the first fruits of Asia under Christ? Greet Mary. Who bestowed much labor on us? Salute. All right, this is a whole bunch of names. Okay, David, take over, David. David, take over. I can't pronounce his name. It don't matter. Oh, yeah. Right. We won't say it, right? We're all working on their names. Just keep going. Just keep going. Okay. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I could do that too. Boom, let's do it. Bend down. It's only three minutes. Which is a servant of the church, which is at Chantres, that ye receive her in the Lord as becometh the saints, and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she hath need of you. For she hath been a succorer of many, and of myself also. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus, who have for my life laid down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Salute my well-beloved Eponetus, who is the first fruits of Achaia unto Christ. Greet Mary, who bestowed much labor on us. Salute Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen, and my fellow prisoners, who are of note among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. Greet Amplius, my beloved in the Lord. Salute Urbane, our helper in Christ, and Stachys, my beloved. Salute Apelles approved in Christ. Salute them which are of Aristobulus' household. Salute Herodian, my kinsman, 
greet them that be of the household of Narcissus, which are in the Lord. Salute Tryphena and Tryphosa, who labor in the Lord. Salute the beloved Persis, which labored much in the Lord. Salute Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother and mine. Salute Asyncritus, Phlegon, Hermas, Petrobus, Hermes, and the brethren which are with them. Salute Philologus and Julia, Narius and his sister, and Olympus, and all the saints which are with them. Salute one another with an holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. But they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. For your obedience has come abroad unto all men. I am glad, therefore, on your behalf. But yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Timotheus, my workfellow, and Lucius, and Jason, and Sosipater, my kinsmen, salute you. I, Tertius, who wrote this epistle, salute you in the Lord. Gaius, my host, and of the whole church, saluteth you. Erastus, the chamberlain of the city, saluteth you. And Quartus, a brother. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith to God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. And, with, and according to Romans 16 and the 7th chapter, salute Adonius and Junia, my kinsmen. They were men. They weren't women. They were men. They would re research the names. They were men. Hold on. That's fine. Okay, we, we, let's keep on. And my fellow prisoners who are noted among the apostles. It did not say they were apostles. It means that they are known by the apostles. They were, as the first verse said, my sisters, they were servants to the church. They were not known as apostles. They were known among the apostles. That's what the book said. It said, known among the apostles. That means they're known by the apostles. They were not apostles. Again, I state the question. Show me in the New Testament when Jesus built the church, when he built a woman in the mission. And with all due respect, I'm at a church that has a, a, a woman as a co-pastor. So if whatever God tells you to do, I, I, I don't question what you say God said because then I'm in, I'm in judgment. You see what I'm saying? So I respect. Mom Shepherd knows I love her. I, I respect her. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to by what the book said. I know what you I think you misquoted something. You said, show me a woman that's in leadership. But I know you didn't mean leadership, but I meant as the head. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. 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 You know, I'm not a big fan of co pastors. You're not a fan of co pastors. You know, because if you think about co pastoring, <laughs> what are the first two words? Co. What's the first two words in compromise? Co. <laughs> Let's think about this. Co that took a bad break. In co pastorship, let's face it. In some churches, the woman runs the church. And the husband is the figurehead, but the woman's calling the shots. All co pastor does in some respects is put official title on what's happening. So so to me, so to me that's nothing but confusion. My wife's not a co pastor, she teaches all three classes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! Well, still, and, and, and listen, listen. Let, let's go right back here again. So, so, so what are you saying, Deacon? That, that's a bunch of confusion. I'm not saying it's a bunch of confusion. It, it still goes here. Listen to this. But it is. It is. God is the head of Christ. 
Christ is the head of man. Man is the head of woman. That's the order. That's it. In Corinthians. Uh, but to put co, even if it is two men. No, because I don't know. If, if you're talking about equal. Let's pray that you may. But now in uh, Georgia, they got it. I know they Oh, here's the definition right here. I, I got the definition right here. No. Uh, the definition. Are y'all going to listen to the definition? Whatever. Anyways, the definition of a co pastor shows here uh, a co pastor is an assistant pastor, and his work is to help the main pastor in running the activities and programs. They have, have been put in place in the church. It says they can step into lead. Uh, they can step in to lead the congregation in the absence of the main pastor. Yeah, and see, that's why they should have just left it as pastor and assistant pastor. Because guess what? In the absence of Pastor Cameron, then I look to Elder Harden, the assistant pastor. But I'm not going to the same. To both of them at the same time to ask one question. I'm the, I don't have no co-husband in my house. Right. <laughs> I make the decision you, with, right. with the assistance of my wife, but the but but it rests on me. If I had to go to him and and out of heart at the same time, I just leave. Yes. Right, right, right. right. It, it is too much. Yes. Who is in charge here? Exactly. Who does the main responsibility fall on? Like at my job. I'm about to be the assistant manager, and my and my manager always tells me, my manager always tells me, you know, he's like, if y'all go ahead, okay. Um, my my manager always tells me, he's like, before I give you this title, I just want you to understand that when you get the title, that you're gonna have a lot of responsibility on you. He told me to go ahead, and y'all stressing me. Oh, um, and. and so essentially, when it, when you have another title or whatever, he's telling me he's like more responsibility falls on you. So if you're called the assistant manager, I can put blame on you. There's different things that come with that. So he's like, you might as well just do your job, whether you have a title or not. So that's kind of how I look at it. I mean, I look at the the, the assistant man, uh, the assistant pastor or whatever, just as a title. I mean, if he does his job, whether he's title the assistant manager or not, is he still winning souls? Is he still helping with the obligations that pastor tells him to do, whether he tells an art to do it or tells me? That's kind of like my outlook on it. We call it one throw to choke in business. You got to have one throw to choke. But in this scenario, Pastor Karen still holds the P&L responsibility for the church. You can do any profit and loss. That's what that is. We, it doesn't matter who does what, how they do it, how they mess it up, he's the one who's got to be accountable because he is the pastor. And over years, you learn spirits. Yeah. And I tell you this, when it comes down to it, I've been at a place to where I was a follower and I'm yet a follower. Don't y'all catch that the wrong way. But I was one that was up under leadership, up under a pastor, still up under leadership. And being that I was... I know the attitudes, I know the issues, I know the problems, I know what it, it feels like to look at my leader and think that my leader is wrong and out of order and doing this and doing that. And this, one thing I done talked to people over and over about this, I had to go to him myself because me and Pastor Aaron Carter bumped heads like it was nobody's business. And he silenced me and didn't even tell me I was silenced. <laughs> uh, he told you. And, 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 and when it come down to it, you know, I did not agree with him. I thought he was completely, I dealt with Elder Harden and told him this and that, told him, you know, but then it came to the point I started pastoring. And when I started pastoring, I realized that Pastor Aaron B. Carter Junior knew exactly what he was talking about. And I had to go to him and tell him that when he called me over there to preach a revival for him. That he knew exactly what he was talking about. He wasn't prosperous like these other leaders. He, he wasn't as popular. He wasn't all this and all that. But he knew 
what he was doing. I've got papers that he wrote yeah. because uh, one thing he was, he was an administrator. Yeah, he was. And I've got papers that he wrote today and I use them. That is what has helped my church to grow. And the thing that he didn't have, he just didn't have people that was following him. Y'all hear what I'm saying? And sometimes there is a place in ministry that we can be, and I'm going to get back over here, but there's a place in ministry that we can be that is out of our lane. Sometimes we can be a helper to the pastor, but we'd rather be the pastor. Sometimes we can be, oh my God, are y'all catching this? Please catch it, please catch it. Because sometimes we can be in a place that, and, and, and let me say another thing. When there is leadership, this is what goes deep right here. It can be one word that comes from another preacher, another leader, another minister that can throw everything completely off. That's right. Y'all don't hear me. I'm not one that try to go, but over these past years, I've been doing a little bit differently. Y'all don't hear me. I used to be all tippy toe, this and that. No, 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 no. I got to tell you. And it came to the point, Elder Hart was up here. I didn't want it to look like I was being mean or this or that, but I kept on trying to correct. I kept on correcting because it, it, this man has taught me a whole lot of things that I know. Y'all don't hear me. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here. Y'all hear me? But yet still, I know some of the little small things that we can say that others may misinterpret or might take this way or that might take that way. And next thing you know, they're going to run with it. So I stop it in the tracks and I correct it. Because God called me to be the head over this church. Not Sister Shondell, not Ella Harden, not Minister Ingram, not Sister Neasy, not First Lady Cameron. Yes. But me. And so therefore, what I have to do, I have to bring correction and put things in its proper place. Because, I'm sorry to say, y'all might can preach, y'all can do this, y'all can do that, because y'all can pure out preach me at times. But one thing that you cannot do, you can't deal with all these ignorant folks. Some of y'all will be not kicked every single one of them out. No matter what is going on. All right. And since they might not know, they might be thinking this and thinking that, but at the same time, I'm sitting here going on a 40 day fast. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. Glory to God. And not saying a word because that is what a pastor does. He not, and when they say, feed my sheep. Yes. A lot of times people think it me. Okay, let me just break this word and give it to them. No. Feed means provide. It means giving them all that they need. Y'all hear what I'm saying? More than that, leading them. Taking them here. Doing this and doing that. Okay, I got way off track then. Come on. Okay. Pastor, can I please say this? Yes, you can. Listen. Oh, did you get yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, I'm gonna get you. better preach me some of your anniversary too. <laughs> <laughs> or you ain't gonna get no office. I'll make sure that. <laughs> Listen, let, let, me, let me say this to you. Let me say this to you. The, the, the place that I hold to God, I understand is very unique. I don't say I don't tell every woman you ought to do what I do. Yes. Yeah. Because God has not opened up the door that He gives every woman. There you In go. Nebraska, I sit with the elders. My bishop told the, 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 the state supervisor she is not in the women's department. Mm -hmm. I didn't tell her that. I didn't go and say, I ain't with the women. I didn't do that. I went to, matter of fact, I went to visit Nebraska. I didn't even know nothing about getting in it. I went to visit. And when I knew anything, when the bishop became, that was the first year of bishop, he said, all right, stand up, mother. Uh, we taking her in. Y'all don't like it? Call Memphis. Lord, the, the Lord done brought you along with That's how I got in. Yes, sir. I didn't go there proud to get in. I didn't, I would, I would just, and, and, and this is what I like about Pastor Quinn. Oh, well, I, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You are awesome. But something hit my mind. Yes, I don't want to interrupt you. But I, I got to do this because I know how I think. Listen, I, I, this is going to be bad. I'm not throwing off. I'm not doing it. Mother, yes, please don't take this the wrong way Come when on. I say this. But if our national church mm -hmm. does not recognize women pastors, mm -hmm. 
then are the bishops of under the national bishop being rebellious by ordaining them? Yes. Well, no, they don't ordain. I'm not. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, I mean, no, y'all don't. I didn't say he ordained me now. I, I, I know what I'm saying. Giving the papers and whatnot. That needs to be clarified. I have pastoral papers. I do not have church guidance. Because the national. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I, 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 I do not have. I have pastoral papers. Wait, yes, ma'am. Wait, wait, wait. I do. I didn't do the announcement. Okay. Now, and like I said, I didn't mean to say. I didn't say it to offend. It's just something that hit my mind. The national church has sanctioned jurisdictional bishops and given them to freedom to take in women yeah. and to appoint them. They are given that liberty Pastor, from the national church. Pastor Cameron, this is how I'll address it. It makes no difference what denomination goes in their denomination. If it don't line up with the word, they're all wrong. They're all wrong. I don't care. I don't care if it's Baptist, school, gospel, church, or God in Christ, whoever it is. If you don't line up with the word, I don't care what you do in your jurisdiction, in your in your denomination, you're wrong. Can I finish with my statement, Pastor? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Lord, I was. I wasn't saying that to try to start something. Yes. Ma because, like I said, what the Lord does for me, I don't. I don't have to ask anybody's permission. But this is what I'm saying. If you are a wise woman, very wise woman, you will come in and you will sit down and be quiet. And what the Lord wants you to do will happen for you, and can't nobody stop. That's right. You, you know, I, I came to Church of God in Christ all the stuff, all these years. I've been, I was more faithful than some of y'all missionaries. I was in everything y'all had. You got that right. I'd be sitting right there. I never, I never, I never, I never, I never, I never bucked Bishop Bassett. I know his feelings. I don't. When I see him now, he smiles at me, and I smile at him. We get along fine. I didn't go to Nebraska trying to get into Church of God in Christ. I went to Nebraska to, just to visit. And the Lord opened the door. And the bishop and my bishop did not believe in one. He said out of his mouth, God told him. I didn't ask. I didn't go to say, I'm a preacher. Look at my thought. I, I would sit down and was call myself coming for a vacation. Have my little, my little grandson that's 18 or 19 years old. I was three. So you know, I didn't go there trying to be a preacher. I had a baby with me. And I, I was just going to get rest. And when I knew anything, he said, Mother. The Lord done brought you a long way. Amen. We'll take her in. Anybody don't like to call me? Stand, stand up, mother. I stood up. He said, praise the Lord. Uh, mother, are you, we taking you in? That's exactly what happened. I didn't go to try to do nothing. I didn't do nothing. Amen. Not one thing did I do. I stood up. He said, "He said, mother, I sat down. He told me to get up, brother. I said, right in my seat. He said, mother, get up. I got up. I didn't know what I was getting up for. I just got up because he told me to get up. So I got up. He said, all right, Mother, because we had another woman pass at that time, Mother Lane. Now, she had done all this work undercover that I didn't know anything about. He said, Mother, I'm, I'm, we're taking you in, and, and welcome to the to Nebraska jurisdiction, and all y'all are like, you can call Memphis anyway, so call them. Sit down, Mother. I sat right back down. I never said one word. When we come to the work, that was at the at his first um, um, work. Was it worker? Work. Work was me. Time for the convocation. He said, Mother, come in and go sit down. She said, Mother, Bishop wants you to sit over there. I didn't know why I was sitting over there. I went and sat where the bishop told me to sit. That was other brothers over there and whatever. I didn't know what they were doing. I didn't know. I just went and sat down. He said, All right. Now we, I'm giving out my appointment papers. Come on, Mother, stand up in the line with these folks right here. All men and me. Wow, my God. And you ain't never seen me nowhere go sit up under the men. You've never seen me. I don't do that. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. He said, Mother, come and stand right here. I stood right there. He passed out the paper, this pastor and this pastor, and, and the photographer, he gave him one. Here's your appointment to the photographer. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what I didn't know nothing. He said, All right, mother, here's your appointment papers. The Lord done brought you a long way. I said, Yes, sir. I stood there until they got through, and I'm sweating, Sean. <laughs> I'm sweating. And when he got through, I said, He said, All right, now y'all go sit down, and I wouldn't sit down, and that's how I got it. The Lord opened the door. I didn't open it. I, you don't have to kick it in. You don't have to try to push yourself. Do what God told you to do. And what he wants you to do, he'll Amen. make it. Amen. 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 If you kick it in. You don't have to do that. You don't have to try to do something. You don't have to do that. Amen. So, so listen. I think. Uh, I believe. Here. That. Women. Are able. To proclaim the gospel. Amen. Women are preachers. All right. Women can evangelize. Mm -hmm. Women are missionaries. And the Bible speaks 
on all of those. It does. Now, I told us earlier, I said that when it comes to hearing the word of God, we hear him, we, we uh, acknowledging him. We acknowledge him. We acknowledge him by first reading the word of God. What does the word say about it? We acknowledge him by going forward to the preacher. What do the preacher got to say? But that preacher going to hear from God, we got to try the spirit. And, and we add to that and say by the spirit to see whether it be of God. But we know try the spirit, it got to match up with what you have on the inside of you. And hopefully you have the Holy Ghost because everybody that say they got the Holy Ghost in that any old kind of way, you can't tell me that that is the Holy Ghost. So when it comes down to it, you better make sure you got God and try that. Come on somebody, you can't cuss nobody out and have the Holy Ghost on the inside. You can't be looking up under somebody's skirt and have the Holy Ghost. You can't be having dreams and how the whole world help me do this. Y'all are going to make me act up. But then we also hear a word from God. I said it earlier that the Bible didn't tell me to come over here over on 36th Street and start up this. But it was God that told me what he told me. So I had to hear from God myself. Now, whether you say you hear from God or you hear this, you hear that, that's between you and God. Hallelujah. Amen. But I do got to say this to add to that. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. it must line up with the word. All right? So, when it comes down to it, keep on ministering. Yes. Amen. Keep on going forward. Keep on doing the will of God. Keep on going. Don't you let nothing hinder you or stop you from doing the will of God. Amen? Amen. Let me hear from Dad. He's going to raise his hand three times. Word is right on my exam. Yes, sir. If they're for me, mm -hmm. they can't be against me. That's right. That's right. Right? That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. There really shouldn't be no. Ain't no. Ain't no. You know? No. Right. In anything that we do. Yes, sir. Because he said, if they're for me. Mm -hmm. huh? Yes, sir. We never have been there. Yes, sir. Uh, we're still trying to get there. And the way things are going, uh, I doubt if we ever will get there. I do. I just doubt if we ever will get there. There's hundreds of, maybe thousands of different non denominations, denominations. We're all supposed to be teaching and preaching the same thing. Uh, if we're for him yes, and sir. with him, yes, sir. I go back to my point. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. I can come over to your church. Yes, sir. Don't bother me. You know that. No. Huh? You come on up. Yeah, come on. It, it, don't, it don't bother me. Because when I'm in Rome, I just do as the Romans do. Yes, yes, sir. Listen, I'm going to hear the word. Yes, yes, huh? yes. And listen. I know when the meeting, women's meetings come up here, there's on, on in the daytime meetings, there's probably about five men. I don't think I've ever missed a one. I'm there, and them women are doing their thing. I'm there in the daytime. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. It don't bother me. It don't bother me. If everybody had the same spirit I had, huh? Somebody get knocked in the head. <laughs> Amen. So, uh, is there any other questions before we go? Thank you, sir. And, and, and listen, we, we, I think we've got some things covered. Yeah. There's no way in, 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 in a few hours that we can cover everything no, with no. this here. And, 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 and yes, sir, we, we did our best. And I'll tell you what.
Uh, and, and some things, you know, I, I thank God for the peace. That go to show that all of us are trying to do what God would have us to do. Amen. Amen. Because we don't all agree with one another. There's something that all of us said that we don't agree with. Yeah. So when it comes down to it, y'all are all totally and completely awesome. So what we want to do, amen, is we want to see about next month, maybe coming up with a, 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 a little more something else. I'm trying to figure this one out. Uh, I'm thinking about this denominational thing. And, and, and I'm trying to figure out how to go about it and which way to go with that subject and, and how to use it and, 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 and what we can do about them lines. Y'all understand? Because I think we can go somewhere with that. So I'm, I'm looking into that. I want to make sure that it's going to be okay and that it, it'll be something to discuss and, a, and, and we can get some good points out of it and learn something. Amen? Amen. But uh, I tell you what, Keep on preaching. Amen. Amen. Keep on preaching. It, it's a smaller crowd than it was the last time. Last time we had a subject about sex. Sex in the Christian life. It was about 140 people in here. Yeah. And none of them left until the end. Listen, we're going to raise an offering. Amen. So before you leave, See if you can give a little something, okay? Amen. And uh, we're going to have uh, Assistant Pastor Harden.